Hey, what's going on? Welcome to Two Geeks, Two Mics. I'm JB. This is Alex. And uh, welcome. Welcome, so, listeners. <laughs> and, and and apparently not viewers. It's never viewers. It's, it's like, they're not, vi- they're not viewing anything. It's like, <laughs> please. Even on YouTube, like, they're just staring at a picture. And I doubt they stare at it for a whole hour. Dude, my sister, she was watching it. She's just looking at the picture. I was like, dude, that's like weird. <laughs> just staring at like the, uh, the, the, the good old... Look at our good old logo. I picture. Yeah. So I think first we should address why this is an entire twenty four hours late. Mm-hmm. And so we we were having a couple problems like audio was getting messed up, and it just in our opinion it wasn't as good as it should have been. So yeah. instead of like just really and, and I stuttered for about like half an hour. <laughs> I was just in, in in the in the in the I'm like Jesus. Even <laughs> Alice was even Alice was just like oh. Yeah, that's, no. that's pretty terrible, dude. Stop. Like, <laughs> like a man tear just rolling down my face. So so we just decided to kind of scrap it all together, and we're just recording a whole new one. Uh, it, w- it was all right, but we can do better. Oh, yeah. Damn, what should yeah, we got to We got to give him back something for, for waiting. You want to you do this one a little longer, longer than usual? You want we want to do a little dance? Get a little dance since we're getting a little thick. <laughs> We'll, we'll, re- we'll record a video of you dancing for five seconds, and then we'll have that on the YouTube, just repeating over and over. Jesus, a GIF or a GIF? <laughs> it's obviously a GIF. It has to like anyone who says it's a GIF is just a GIF is a terrible person. Dude, we're losing half of our audience. <laughs> so, because the argument some people say is like, "Oh, you don't say um, gorilla," yeah, but you also don't say it like, "What was the the giraffe?" Giraffe, like there are different G sounds, and it's basically like the guy who made GIFs is like, I want it to be GIFs, so you know, if I made something, it'd be cool if people actually used the name I I made, yeah, and weren't just like, nah, fuck you. So what you're saying is Frankenstein is the monster, right? It's like that's, no, <laughs> that's basically that what was I was like, getting to. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like I mean, like you can't just decide who's what. Like that's not how it works. <laughs> so. Today we're going to be talking about video games. And to kind of start things off, recently uh, Rockstar has been doing some pretty pretty crazy and wild things on their Twitter. It's pretty it's pretty whack in my opinion <laughs> that they would that they would do something like this like they're not the type of company unless that game is damn near ready because that's the only that's the only way I'm like okay, that makes sense cuz Rockstar always like they they know how to do PR, yeah. pretty much by saying nothing, revealing nothing, and then when the game comes out, like the sales show, like um, the less they show, the better off they are because people aren't just like, oh, let me let me look into five videos about yeah. what's going on in the story mode. And and for those who don't know, they they released a one picture with their logo with like kind of faded, mm-hmm. and, and it, it was yeah, it was remin- it was reminiscent of uh, the. The backdrop or like the art of Red Dead Redemption, the cover. And then that was yesterday. And it, at that point, it was it seemed like almost all speculation. But today mm-hmm. they released a second picture, which like very much points to a Red Dead Redemption sequel. Or what, yeah, like the, the art is is you, right there. There's you, seven characters. Do you call them treacles? Because this is the third one. Would be third technically. Hmm. No, it's still a sequel. It's a sequel. A, a tri- it's just a triquel. A tranquilizer, <laughs> and so yeah, that I hope they. I really hope they do it for PC. They have to. Yeah, cause and and no, it was it was so crazy because yesterday I was like, a part of me was just like, now that I'm gonna do it, but but like I, I I even said it um that the yeah I think it is Red Dead Redemption and it is and I'm just like, and I'm kind of bummed out because I wanted something new. The last like I think the last new game they ever made was like Bully. Was like an 06. Oh, yeah. that, that and, one was and, and that and that's counting in in terms of made by Rockstar Studios or developed, because because mm. how it works is it's the parent company which is 2K under it is Rockstar Incorporated and then the developers are just random like because if you would if you count made by Rockstar you'd count LA Noir which is not developed by Rockstar and the you remember LA Noir you uh, well, I never I've I've heard of it but I never played it. You're pretty much a detective, and you're you're you do like a lot of investigating, and 
there are some like for for a game that's like very light on shooting, it has really awesome like mechanics, cover based shooting. Really? Yeah, I I think it's really good. And there's a well, I think it was kind of lacking in terms of uh, side missions, but overall, it was a great story. Um, well, yeah, but because you're the type of person to, as soon as any side quest is available, you have to like you always finish side quests before anything else. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. No doubt about that. Like. Skyrim, I was just like, hmm, to the, ooh, a, a side mission. And then it's just like, what was I supposed to be doing in the world? Oh, yeah, saving the world. <laughs> and Dude, then, Dova King saved the world like four times. I was like, yeah, how many times does the world have to be in peril? No, but but it was infuriating. Like, when we when we played Borderlands, like, I, I mean, I, I don't mind side missions. Like, sure, it makes us stronger. But sometimes, like, the story was just like, man, I need to know what's next. And you're like, uh, let's collect these 40 mushrooms real quick <laughs> for a minimal amount of cash. And I'm just like, oh. <laughs> and and it's, it's it's fascinating because everybody's like, oh, you're, you're such a completionist. But, like, it's not a matter of, like, the trophies. I it's, And I don't know whether I, like, mm, it feels good to have nothing on the map. It's just, like, I I think I probably need it. Like, if I don't do all the side quests, you got to understand that I am really, like, I, I'm self-aware that I'm not as good as game, at games as I should be. <laughs> For the amount of love you have for games, it seems right? like you should be better skilled. Yeah, and it's just like, hey, you want to play this online game? He's like, online game? No. It's just, yeah, like, like people are just like, do you play online? It's like, no, dude, I get freaking destroyed. I played Call, playing Call of Duty once, and I got, I'm that one guy who, like, rage quits. It's just like, oh, dude, I got a rage quit. It's just like, yeah, that's, that's uh, me. It's, and it kind of sucks because sometimes I'll play with people who are really good, and they'll kind of, like, improve my ranking, and then I'll stop playing with them. And then I'm left with, like, really good people, and I'm still sucking. It's like, fuck me. Like, can I just restart? Can I just reset everything? Dude, playing with people who suck is the best. That's why I love playing with Alex. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's by far some of the, my favorite pastimes, just both of us sucking at the same time. Mm. Yeah, Crazy. We're, we're, Gotta watch that. <laughs> we're, both, <laughs> we're both sucking. <laughs> no, yeah, we're both we're, sucking pretty hard. We're, we're kind of almost equal footing. I'm, I, I'm probably, like, a bit above you but like i wouldn't say it's yeah too big of a I th- gap. I, no i think i think you you're very good at like getting the hang of a lot of mechanics faster than me me like like i feel like i don't utilize a lot of some aspects of certain games that you just like catch on to pretty quickly you're the you're the type of nigga to go to the the search bar put google and then click on google.com to search for yahoo that's you mm. but yeah um Stuff. I'm glad we got that out there, JB. Yeah. Um. I mean, I'm trying to think of what bro awkward silence. No. Okay. So, so I, I was, I was trying to text my brother, to shut up, and then I accidentally <laughs> texted you. <laughs> I was like, I'm sorry. I, I feel like I'm taking up too much mic time. You're just like, shut up. I'm like, all right. Tirando mi indirectas or directas, if you really think about it. <laughs> Dude, that, that like hit me right in the heart. I was like, okay, I'm sorry. I know because I, I, I heard my brother in the background. I was like, man, I can't be messing up this audio. And then I was like, oh, shut up. And then you're like, okay. And I'm like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> oh jeez. Let's let's talk about our favorite studios. Like, and and obviously we're probably gonna be confused about who makes what because we're we're I I mean I'd go as far to say like I'm pretty ignorant when it comes to a lot of things. Bro, if anything, I'm more ignorant. Like, oh yeah. The only like, company cause... I know for sure that made a game is like Firaxis, and they made Civilization. Mm-hmm. But other than that, it's like I just know the publishers. Yeah, it gets really confusing when it comes to publishers and the third party, and then there's like people who remake games who are different publishers for some reason. Oh yeah, like it's... the New Vegas one, Fallout New Vegas. Who is who is that again? It was Obsidian. Yeah. I was I was reaching for it, but it but it was like stuck <laughs> in the in like the rack. It's so strange because Fallout New Vegas compared to three, like most people argue that New Vegas is better. Yeah, it's of, so it's so crazy. Yeah, but then like with Fallout Four, um, they haven't given Obsidian any sort of like signs that hey you're gonna be able to do this again. Mm-hmm. Like I feel like they're salty. It's like hey they made a better game than us. Right and no, it's it's kind of sad to see that four, what four was I think four was I hear four was great. 
mm-hmm. but it was lackluster yeah, compared definitely. to like what people are, are used to. And a lot of people blame like the engine that it's very very dated mm-hmm. uh, for what it should be. But I I don't, I don't know about the technicalities of that. That's kind of but the I mean, why like, I feel like Obsidian made a better game for New Vegas because they had the engine in place, so mm-hmm. they didn't have to focus on like basically creating an entire world. All they had to do was focus on like story and characters and all that. Yeah, it's like that kind of gave them a one up. But yeah, I mean, and the the uh, it, it's so crazy how like you really look back at three and you you see, you do see the big flaws. Like and actually with both of them, what the hell is with the color scheme of the weird orangeness tint and the green yeah. tint? I mean, they I don't were, understand that. They were going for that like wasteland type mm-hmm. deal, and I guess they might have overdone it. Four, yeah. I think they really got it on four. Four is like the graphics are amazing, like way better yeah. than any of them. In ter- in terms of how it how it ran in your case, how was it? Like, did you have any issues? Not really. I mean. Even my computer, I think, is pretty good, yet I still had to run it on medium. Mm-hmm. Because on a high, it eventually, like, the god rays, like, the sunlight would eventually, like, start, like, crackling. And it would just occasionally just kind of mess up. So, but medium ran pretty well, and it wasn't, like, anything like, oh, gross, like, this looks fake or nasty. It was still pretty good. I didn't have mm-hmm. any big problems with it. Yeah, I get you. All right. No. Of all the games you've played, which was the one that surprised you the most in terms of quality? Well, actually, that can go both ways. What game was like surprisingly like not as good as you thought it would be, or a game that you're just like expecting nothing out of, and you were like, "Wow, this is like by far one of the best experiences I've had." Definitely, um, The Walking Dead from the Telltale, the mm-hmm. Telltale game. The first, the first one, not the second. For sure, I know. I <laughs> you kind of know. I kind of didn't. I really didn't like the second one. Yeah, I mean, I feel like it was it was a lot more fast paced than it should have been, because, mm-hmm. and I don't know whether that's, and I love choice based games, because, I I fully understand the formula. It's always like a diamond where it starts in the same place and ends in the same place, mm-hmm. but where it goes from there is like pretty much down to you, and I think that's really fascinating how, how they can all bring it all like the story together, but it's I feel like it's sometimes scary because. The idea of the illusion of choice kind of mm. is annoying about how you think, oh, well, if I do this, things will change, but they don't, won't necessarily. And I feel like some games do it a lot more because they have a lot less to lose because with a franchise like Telltale or like a, a franchise like The Walking Dead, there's like a comic for, for it and they expect to make sequels and things like that. In my mind, whenever I play those type of story-based games, I like to pretend <laughs> that there are different endings so in my mind, like, it makes my choices way more important. Even though I know, like, it's going to end pretty much the same. But you got to have, like, that whole ignorance mm-hmm. in order to kind of enjoy it. Yeah, and and so by far one of the best choice-based games I've ever played. Well, it's it's de- it's debatable, but um, in terms of compared to The Walking Dead, but Heavy Rain, you could tell, like, that Heavy Rain, there are, like, if I'm correct, 27 different endings. Oh, uh, but ba- based off like the choice and they are totally different mm-hmm. like characters can die and it will have like a significant impact on the ending that you have and the decisions you make are even like small ones end up growing into bigger problems it's like a huge butterfly effect type deal and it's really fascinating how you could tell like they were just like let's make there's not going to be a sequel for every rain like there's, there's no way because it's one of those like it's so open ended to the point where it improves the quality there's like because sometimes you do know that, like, Mass Effect... Well, actually, Mass Effect is pretty interesting because there are a lot more choices and they can get passed on. And that makes it a lot more interesting. See, um, it's funny that I think about it because I know whenever I play a good game, like, whether it's good or what makes a game good. Mm-hmm. But if I'd ever try to make a game, like, whew, it would be <laughs> disgusting. Like even if right. they gave me all like the like all the graphics were there and I pretty much had to just come up with a story like or anything really I'd probably just flip flop. Yeah, I mean it's it's kind of crazy how people don't really consider what it takes to like it takes like hundreds of people sometimes. Yeah. Dep- well, depending on the game, um, I mean some games might have like smaller studios, and, and I'm trying to think of an independent game that surprised me. An indie, as the as the youngins call it. 
the, um, the Goat Simulator? Go see my pit like five minutes. I was like, mm, this was a game. Oh, you know what was indie actually? Payday 2. That was oh, yeah. indie it is. until it wasn't. And then <laughs> it went to shit. <laughs> they like, they started getting yeah. microtransactions and like everyone abandoned ship. But mm -hmm. now they took them off, but it's not the same. And yeah, like, no, because it, it's, it's a matter of like tainted. Like, it's kind of, like, tainted, like, the idea of, like, going back to it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's kind of, like, the idea of, oh, like, I'm scared they're going to do something again. And it's, it there's not enough trust anymore. And uh, most of the speculation people had was they they only took away microtransaction because they're, they're pretty sure they're going to make a payday 3. So, like, if your whole fan base hates you, it's kind of hard to sell a third installation of the game. <laughs> but that was, that was a fun game, though. We got, oh, like, uh we got like what 100 hours maybe on it yeah definitely and it, it was it was pretty repetitive but for some reason like i never really got tired of it yeah i mean it's it's the like you know you're growing in a way although some some like in the terms of um like your character it's kind of hard to notice like your character getting stronger but like the the perks you get and the mm -hmm. and the things you buy do make it more interesting and then, overall and then obviously the masks dude the clown masks, dude, right? Dude, I had a ch dude. Pit is the reason I changed my my username for Steam. People are just like Jose, and every time I hear the word, s somebody call me like my my first name, H O Z A Y. You know Jose. Um, I get really like a Jose. I'm like Jesus. So I just changed it to J because I was so pissed off and annoyed. And then back then, you, you didn't have a mic, so it's not like you, you could be like, oh, just call me JV. It's like, nah, you were Jose from then on out. No, yeah, like, they were just like, oh, you guys can call me uh, JV or whatever. And they're just like, no. <laughs> I'm like, wow. I love I love you guys playing with random strangers. We, we would always just play by ourselves, though. Like, mm -hmm. we usually do that with co-op games we get. Like, we never play with anyone else. And I feel like that's kind of good. Because sometimes I'll see reviews, it's like, the community is so toxic, like, everyone sucks. And I'm like, well, it's just me and JV, so I, th I think we'll be good. <laughs> it's just like that moment when you realize your friend's toxic, and you're just like, I want to leave. <laughs> don't, talk, don't, don't, ever, don't, don't ever come talk to me ever again. <laughs> now, back to story games, you uh, know. Uh, yes, yes, the, the true story, yes. No, um, I feel like some sometimes games, in uh, we were talking about, like, the illusion of choice. I always hate those games that just like kind of tack on stuff, tack on like ideas that they just like. Oh, you know what's hip with the ch kids? Choice, and <laughs> and then they just end up doing choices that make no sense, are just put in there just for no reason. And like I do enjoy games, some of the best games like in history, all like like of all time have no choice, mm -hmm. and. And that's what makes them strong because I feel like a, something that's kind of set in stone is is a lot more interesting than like the characters or the, the the gamers deciding. Because if you create an open ended game, then I feel like it loses a lot of the story polish, mm -hmm. or at least it's more difficult to do other things because if, to the story. If you have like a linear story, at that point it's very much like a movie. You can choose everything the character mm -hmm. experiences. Like, yeah. there's nothing, there's no one part of the story that you're like, oh, I feel kind of weak, but we kind of have to keep it. Everything's kind of exactly how you want it, usually. Yeah. And now that the, the, the crazy thing about, like, the Fallout games is, like, there's so many inner workings that, like, we don't understand, like, how crazy that, like, oh, I made this decision. Oh, there goes that. That's gone forever. And, like, that's kind of, that's kind of scary to know that, like, you make one decision and things just disappear, and you're just like, Ugh. Are you Are you talking about the bobblehead? Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> so in Fallout 3, there's, like, bobblehead collectibles, but there's one in a certain city. Or what happened? You can kind of... It was, there's one There's one in, um... There's, there's one in, like, a map you only go for for a certain amount of time, and this one was, like, straight off the beaten path. Like, crazy. Like, oh, you gotta go in this room, check under the bed, go into the cellar, and jump off a roof. I'm like, um... <laughs> You could you could have told me that before, and I was just trying to like look up ways to get back in to the to the vault, and I and I was on I was on a PS3, so there's no like well you know I just work around you know um, insert whatever code or whatever yeah 
and then the bobble the bobblehead appears. But like no, it was me just like really sad. You lost. And I mean, and then how far along had you been? Like how many hours would you have had to gone back to, like gone back to that point? Hey man, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was like tens of hours. Oh shoot, that's yeah, nah, not worth it. You just gonna yeah, was, do you know? And, and the problem like that is, oh, go, go ahead. Oh, this is awkward. No. They have I got like this. Their... I got this. I got. This. Don't worry, but don't. I, I don't. Don't worry. The, <laughs> the the issue I I tend to have is that I save a lot. I pretty much save every five seconds if I can. <laughs> Especially now that I'm on PC, I'm just like, hey, where's that F5 button? Uh, that quick save. <laughs> that quick save every two minutes. I'm just like, nah, nah. I I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna risk it. Opens one door. <gasps> it's just a. It's just a bathroom. <laughs> And then I started I started playing Fallout 4 on hardcore mode where there is no quick saving. Like you have to find a bed to save, and that's been like one of the most brutal games. Like, well, I mean, I played Dark Souls for five minutes or like <laughs> two hours, and I was like too brutal. <laughs> but yeah. Fa- Fallout 4 really kind of it's brutal enough to where it's hard, but I, I still cannot I still can like survive. I swear, sometimes hard people confuse hard with unfair. Like sometimes there's just those games that's just like why like why would you, like really a f- a five stage boss that gr- that like gradually gets stronger like what are you doing? <laughs> but then you have like games like Crash Bandicoot from the nineties. That's just like hard. Mm-hmm. And also yeah, it, unfair. <laughs> no, it's, I'd say well, it just nah, sometimes sometimes it's just like. How was I supposed to know that? Like, how was I supposed to know I was oh, supposed yeah. to get up there? But, I mean, it's a lot of those games were trial and error. And we gotta finish that game. <laughs> I got like a like a good, a pretty neat stack of games I need to finish for PS3 that I never gotten around to. I mean, we got through what like twenty percent of Crash Bandicoot, or like thirty. More, more, yeah, like forty percent. Oh, like that one turtle part. So you're like on this singular bridge, and there's oh like, god, there's gaps in the in the bridge. It's a wooden bridge, and there's like turtles. That you're supposed to jump on, and then when they flip over, you can jump on them again for like a bounce boost. But like yes, the- yes, no. You think, oh well, I just bounce off it, and then it's like super weak, and you're just like, oh, all right. Yeah, you have to jump and- as you land on it too. And no, like- yeah, you have- no, you have to jump on it once, and then it's on its back, and then you jump on it again, and then it's it's those BS moments where it's just like, oh, I hit it. Now what? I'm just like, well, that's it. <laughs> And, like, it doesn't teach you any of this. You, like, it just gives you a turtle and that gap, and it's, like, figure it out. And at first, like, we figured it was, like, enemies that if you touch them, you die. So we, like, avoided them at all costs. Well, no, we were I, – I usually end up, like, smacking them. And, like, well, obviously, oh, yeah, I'm not, them right I'm, I don't want to deal with them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it took us, like, what, like, maybe, like, a half hour, 40 yeah. minutes to figure that out? And then it sets you back, like, several levels. But I think that game is, is well-balanced. Um, I hear the second one is like really hard. <laughs> and don't worry, I got that one and three. <laughs> I with those type of games though, it kind of happened with the Guitar Hero as well. It's like whenever the first installment comes out, everyone's like, "Man, this is super hard." Like, "Oh, it's fun," but then once like the second one comes out, everyone's had like they're trying practice. to set set the set the bar higher. I bet. Yeah. And the guy who's just like, "Oh, I should start playing Guitar Hero." I was like, "Oh yeah, you should probably start from the beginning." He's like, "Nah, I'll get three. And it's just like playing uh raining blood or whatever it's just like <laughs> that you need a friend to press some keys and while you press the th- while you tap the bottom part that's like <laughs> and then there's like people like freddy wong the youtuber who's fucking insane that dude went to like world championships when he was oh, like a, a younger kid did, did i try playing <laughs> do, do you gotta understand that my that my lack of success in bands really reflects my guitar hero skills <laughs> I think I was in I was in band viewers, you know, viewers or l- listeners. We can I'll turn this podcast around right now. <laughs> I, will, I will I will turn this thing around, <laughs> y'all. What What did you play, JB? I was a percussionist. I played the percussion. Oh, dude. Well, what's a percussion? Is that a guitar? It's like a concussion, but like a lot worse. <laughs> Because you can't because you can't hear afterwards. <laughs> hey, how are your ears doing? I'm pretty sure I've lost like a couple years of hearing for sure. Like, don't, don't fucking. <laughs> it kind of it kind of saddens me because like uh, my 
my instructor, he's like pretty old. I think he's like 50s ish. He's like really deaf from all those years of drumming. Like, I was I'll be speaking to him like like this, and he'll be like, "What?" And I'm like, "Ah, I don't want to <laughs> yell at you, but you're kind of deaf." You like be? I've I've never. I don't think I've ever had to deal with like a really deaf person. At least like like my great grandma was like can't hear, but like I never have to talk to her because she's just kind of like there. She's she she just exists barely. Um, no, my aunt. Were you there, my deaf aunt? Yeah, I was. Oh. I was there. He, he I know, and it's, it 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 ca- it catches me off guard sometimes because like you're just like oh I told like and then you kind of have to raise your voice and you feel kind of uncomfortable. Yeah, with definitely. the idea of raising your. Voice. So my aunt's like she's getting old and she's like hearing like worse than my teacher. Like I'll be talking normal and like I have to start yelling. And it's weird because then, like, JB will be right next to me. And, like, he's, he hears me yelling, but she's, like, barely hearing me. And it's like, ugh. It's yeah. weird. And, no, like, you, you're, in a way, it just kind of goes against what you're taught. Like, you can't yell at, an old, like, a person. <laughs> like, you're not supposed to be just yelling at older people, especially. And then you're just yelling at, like, a like a feeble person. And, and then I have to, like, keep my smile. So I have to smile and yell at the same time. So it's like, yes, I'd like some toast. And she's like. Okay, here's some roast, and I'm like, ah. Uh. <laughs> you you made a roast in five minutes. I'm not gonna lie, that's pretty impressive. <laughs> I just take both Br- briskets and gravy <laughs> in, in Cutthroat Kitchen, uh, which is a show about about being in a kitchen, cutting roasts in kitchens. <laughs> about, yeah, I got you. About murder, cannibalism. Um, the, the, it's just like, all right, guys, you guys are gonna make biscuits and gravy, and the, and the guy's just like briskets and gravy, got it, and the end is pulling out beef. And then and then gravy and then everybody's just like, what the hell's he doing? And then he just went with it and he made it. He did. Oh, it. <laughs> right? See, that's it. You gotta you gotta surprise people. Right? I bet they're just like, this is really good gravy. That's all I really see. That's all the connection I see. So I guess that's sufficient. <laughs> you actually you watch a lot of cooking shows, though, right? I I occasionally watch cooking shows. I mean. Well, I mean, I wish I had t- more time to watch cooking shows, but Alton Brown, we Alton Brown is, is is the bee's knees. He's he's in Cutthroat Kitchen. He's in, ooh, damn! I just realized I do watch like I watch like highlights of Gordon Ramsay yelling at people. I don't know if you count that as cooking. I feel like it's more just drama. Wait, but can you can you, what can you cook besides like pastries? Because I know you can make like a a pretty mean apple pie. Dude, I, I no, nah, I don't know about apple pie. Or what was I, it? Apple apple fritter. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause in in summer school they had like a big big old sack of apples, and um, <laughs> and like I would be like, can I have them? And then just like take some, and there's a bunch left over, so I just end up taking the bag because I'm a thief. <laughs> but I'm like Robin Hood. I'm giving back to the community. You and my community, I mean my family. <laughs> you yourself and I. Yeah. No. And and then and. and and I slice up the apples, get some other stuff that I, I can't remember the ingredients, and then I make an apple apple crumble is the. Oh, that was called. Mm-hmm. And so, I'm, I think I'm I, I'd go as far as say I'm pretty decent at being. All you gotta do is follow the recipe. I mean, it's not too tough. So, what kind of food like entrees can you make? Come on, dude, you you still make that fettuccine Ooh. alfredo. Dude, it's spaghetti. Don't. Or, spaghetti. Pasta, All pasta dude, spaghetti. Don't don't, don't oversell it. <laughs> yeah, but that was good though. I was kind of surprised. What a jerk! What I was surprised. No, it's what the not. Were you expecting garbage? No, well, cause the in total the ingredients were like four four dollars, so I was expecting like some like average tasting meal. It's it's all about it's it's all about salting the uh, the pasta. You know what I'm saying? And the seasoning. Salt, salt. Mm-hmm. And sasam. But yeah, no, and well, then, also we didn't have to buy the meat, so I think that's why it wasn't as expensive. That's true. But if you get like the big old uh, frozen chicken stuff, it's it's pretty cheap. Dude, I feel like people, people like, like my mom, like especially she like freezes stuff too much. Like I feel like she over, like she thinks once like meat, meat is like out in the open, like it just it explodes and just it, it, it turns into a pile of fungus. Like I don't know, I don't know what she thinks. Like, and then and then just like take out the the thing from the freezer. It's like well, you could put it in the refrigerator the day before, because you know you're gonna eat it, and then. And then have a much easier life and have fresher ingredients. And she's like, nah, man, I ain't got time for all that jazz. It's weird because if you put stuff in the freezer, it does last longer. Mm-hmm. But after like a while, it gets like that freezer burn taste. Yeah. And at that point, it's pretty much inedible. Like, why even 
Yeah, like, no, I feel like people sometimes, like, would rather it free, like, get burned in the freezer and just get destroyed than, like, them, oh, man, I didn't, it, it, like, spoiled. it, like, it spoiled or whatever. I mean, obviously, you're not eating it either way. Like, what the hell are you buying a big old sack of chicken for in the first place if you're not going to eat it? <laughs> I think it's just the fact that when it's in the freezer, before you eat it, it still looks good as opposed to something not looking good in like the fridge do no uh you know what i learned from you about <gasps> cooking etiquette what? you got to lower them power settings on the microwave oh yes i think that's one of the most revolutionary things i've learned in like, the <laughs> past year so no see, no and um and it's it's better for me especially cuz like my microwave is like freaking like a samsung it's also got a phone in it, apparently. I don't know. I don't understand like why Samsung's doing making microwaves, but like the thing doesn't spin, mm -hmm. so it ends up being like, oh, I'm a freaking radiate this mofo, and then it ends up being like half just charred and like oh, they're half frozen. Br brittle. Yeah, and I'm just like, what the hell, this sucks. So the the thing he's talking about is whenever you put something in the microwave and you put like a minute or whatever, it automatically just does it on high heat, but on pretty much all microwaves, you can change the power level. And I usually, especially when cooking like frozen stuff, I usually lower the power about like 50 to 60%. And what that does, it basically 60% of the power it uses. So it kind of, it's it basically cooks it slower, so it cooks evenly. And the, it works amazing for like hot pockets. Mm -hmm. Like you no longer get like that freezing. Wait, so what you're saying is that when my hot pocket explodes, it's not it telling me it's ready. What are you, <laughs> what are you getting when at? When it catches fire, that doesn't mean it's <laughs> cooked to perfection. Oh. Dude, if, if you, anybody who's ever, like, had the, just the straight-up curd of cheese, like, cold cheese, like, knows the struggle. I'm just like, oh, it's so nasty. <laughs> and then, and then the, the, one of the corn is just, like, charred, and just, like, the bread is, like, hard as a rock. I'm like, Jesus, oh, man. You know what else I also learned? So, but, have you ever reheated a pizza, and then, like, the bread is all kind of, like, wonky? You you gotta put a, a freaking, a towel over it. Not a towel, towel. Uh, like, paper towel. No. Put oh, a, wait, a about? glass of water in. Oh, yeah. I, yeah, I don't do that. <laughs> that's too much effort. That's, that's excessive. See, but at that point, another thing you can just do is... It, just like, retains in, moisture. That's the thing about it, right? Yeah, but at that point, you can also just put your pizza in the oven. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. I that's usually way better. Bake but pizza. The problem with like, that is it takes too long. I have no. I I'm not really the person like I need it now. <laughs> I'm just like I I I for the when I'm when I'm reheating especially like cold stuff like I'll put it on like power letting twenty percent and let it do, do it oh, in there damn. for like five five to ten if I have to. <laughs> just soaking up all that energy, wasting yeah. that electricity bill. Well, I mean theoretically, if if I put it for a minute in a hundred percent and it's twenty percent for ten minutes, the same thing. It's your math is off, but I see what you were trying to say. <laughs> you, you tried. <laughs> Five minutes, I meant. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense, but I'm sure microwave microwaves are pretty complex, dude. Yeah. Microwaves. I, don't even, I wonder if like, like they're, they're those people just like, oh, I, I managed to leave the door open while I put it, like have the microwave on. I was like, why would you? Why would you decide to is do that? Is that even possible? <laughs> yeah. Like the people like. People have like a, a workaround, so like you, they can microwave stuff, microwave the and then house. just microwave the entire house. Like, man, you got to keep this place warm. <laughs> and man, my tumor's itchy. <laughs> no, it's it's weird because the microwave has pretty much stayed the same since it was invented. Like, the only real things that have been added is like the spinning plate. Mm. And there was like this one YouTuber who was thinking, who pretty much made a prototype of a microwave that has a screen. That shows you like the thermal reading of your food, and it kind of shows you like which parts are still hot and cold, and mm -hmm. at the same time, it could be hooked up to your phone to like an app to kind of let you know when your food is ready. And then you got like all these signatures and like people saying they wanted it, and then nothing ever happened. I think it's been like two years now, and I'm still waiting on it. <laughs> and he's like, he's a smart dude. Like he's not just some random guy. Like he worked at NASA for a bit. And he was, I think Jesus. He was, yeah, he was. I think he was part of like the curiosity team. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I'm still waiting for that microwave though. Yeah, microwave in space. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh man, I, I gotta try some of the some of that space food. I bet it's like pure garbage. Which space food? Like the the stuff like that's like like oh, sealed the... and packed. Oh yeah, yeah. dude. I, I astronaut ice cream is a lie though. It's marshmallow. I mean, it's disgusting. That's what it is. I had some. Like, it's like it's it's actually chalky more than yeah. anything. It was like I tried some at Disney and it's like this is not mm-hmm. ice cream. <laughs> and then it, dude, it turns out you, what's what what's your favorite ice cream? Oh, the one I have here, dude. It's like... Oh, yes. <laughs> that, is that stuff expensive? Because that shit is it's, good. It's gotta be. It's, it's Blue Bunny. Name mm-hmm. That name brand ice cream. What it, It's right. like caramel salted craze, I think. It's like vanilla yeah. with caramel and then chocolate bunnies. And then it's kind of More salted. caramel inside. With more caramel, yeah. Oh, it, it's so good. Yeah, like, I when I... like it's It was like... I was like surprised... <laughs> <laughs> how good it was i was just like okay i'll have some ice cream and i was like hey um you got any more ice cream and then <laughs> like I, left, I was like itching you were here and i left for work and when i got back like that the, the ice cream was gone like you, you comes comes it. home there's like a like one of the little bunnies on my face i'm like dude i don't know what happened <laughs> there wasn't that much you know there was just a little <laughs> and then and then at one point you were also like hey let's eat ice cream so i don't like his bath like, <laughs> yeah, it's like you want some ice cream. He's just like, nah. Hey, I'm gonna serve you some ice cream though. Seriously, like you, you look malnourished. <laughs> I might not always have food in my house, but you, you damn sure I'm gonna have some good ass ice cream in my freezer. That's true. I'm pretty much the opposite. There's always just like, I was like, hey, you want some pasta? He's like, no, dude, you got anything sweet? I'm just like, dude, if, if there was, there, there's never anything sweet in my house. I pretty much destroyed in like a matter of seconds. <laughs> Wait, no, no, but like. An ice cream that that I recently like got into that was like, damn, this is really good. Like, um, what is it? Uh, cookie dough ice cream. From ice cream dough. Have you tried it from Dairy Queen? No, I've never eaten it. Mm. Oh, so you just get like what? Just from H E B or whatever? I mean, I've had some when I went to Boston because you know I'm very cultured like that. Um, yeah, you, you travel. I travel to all kinds of places like like Roma, Texas, and Boston. And, you know and, all those places. And Mexico. Dude, the I'm trying to think of the last time I went to Mexico. I think I went to the Mexico like a couple months ago. I was like the Mexico, the Mexico. <laughs> how how long ago? I think it was a couple months. I I think we went for like my mom needed some contacts or whatever. That my mom ends up using for like oh you're only supposed to use it for a month. What was that? Three months? Wow, that's great. And she's like, man, my eyes feel don't feel good. I was like, yeah, because like a <laughs> the contact is officially a part of your body now like it's it, it it's has melted to your you. skin <laughs> it's like three months wow six months pretty long time <laughs> I, I can't believe you can use these things for a year <laughs> I, it's and it's so weird because it's like everything's cheaper there so it, it feel like you just buy more dude i bet mexicans are just uh, mexicans i say that in a certain in a way like those like negative <laughs> negative connotation um mexicans are just like oh, tourists i love them yeah because because like, they're so beneficial to them because everything there's so crazy cheap and awesome especially like on those border towns mm-hmm. no and then i think it's in laredo that you can get like visas to come over to Wait, the u.s li- which laredo oh, like no. mexico laredo no. or laredo as in Texas. in america in, oh, okay. in the americas i mm-hmm. think you can get a vi- visa or not a visa but i kind of like a green card i think no yeah I'm spouting all these terms, but I'm just hoping one sticks. But you can basically come over to like the, to the mall that's right there on the U.S. side and shop and then go back. Oh, I've seen that. That's actually. Yeah. But why though? I don't understand. Like why the the Mexican people? Cause no, I've seen like Mexican people shop here, but like why would they want to? Unless the products are cheaper for some reason. Not even that it's cheaper, but maybe they just don't have the same variety. Like not not all stores are in Mexico. Yeah. No, you always see the 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 license plates. Oh, yeah, just like from like some. I'm just like, where the hell is that? I've never <laughs> even heard of that place. <laughs> Dude, being in the valley is like pretty pretty crazy. How far you have to travel to get stuff. It's just like, hey, I'm gonna go buy a game. It's like, all right. It's like, it's like, well, I'll be back in 30 minutes or no, probably longer. Like, I'll be back in like an hour and a half or something. Cause but there, go like go. But there's like no traffic though. That's the thing. Like over here, I, I'd probably take 30 minutes as well, just because of traffic. Mm-hmm. But over there, I'd I'd rather drive long distances in the same amount of time. Like, I hate going to school, 
which is like I think like four miles away, mm-hmm. but yet it takes like eleven, twelve minutes. And it's like, ah, yeah. oh, this is annoying. Like I'm not moving. I'm just like at one spot. Mm-hmm. Dude, down here in the valley, like people start driving it. Like, oh, I learned how to drive when I was five. I was like, Jesus, man. <laughs> and no, people are like driving. Like people are legit driving around. And like, that's kind of like why I haven't started driving. Because there's always that fear. It's like, dude, what if like a freaking a ten year old crashes into me and we have to exchange information and neither of us have a license and we just kind of <laughs> drive away sad. It's because a, a lot of over there, like people just drive around for fun. Like, yeah. That's basically what people do. And there's no there's no public transportation. I think there's like one bus that nobody takes. There's no bus over there. I don't know. <laughs> there's just like one that just one that takes you like STC. Oh, true. <laughs> the South Texas. It's, it's a, the par- the party bus. <laughs> <laughs> I I mean, the problem is you don't really need transportation, public transportation. Well, yeah, because it's not dense. The population just drive so. you to McDonald's and Whataburger all day. Yeah. The most interesting places in Rome. <laughs> She's like, man, I'm kind of bored. It's like, yeah, let's go to let's go to Whataburger and just eat. <laughs> I feel like we, we are the people who eat for fun. <laughs> like it's us. Just like out of boredom, it's like, well, I guess I'll I'll eat another meal today. <laughs> She's like, it's like you you end up um, eating like seven meals a day. And you're just like, what happened? It's like, how much is a regular does a regular person like three meals a day? I'm just like, mm, not not down here. I mean, when you got, like, candy apples with, like, sugar and, like, all this stuff for, like, three, four dollars, it's like... Dude, I love fruits, like, like candy apples and uh, <laughs> a piña colada, you know, all that stuff, you know? Broccoli with a ton of cheese, you know, all that good stuff. <laughs> yeah, man, but you gotta add something. You gotta make it interesting. Not, I mean, let's, let's, of all the, like... We're, we're, we're going to talk about fruit as a topic. And people are like, how are you, what are you even going to talk about on fruit? And it's just like, well, it's all about thinking about like what fruit is like pound for pound the best. Did we, did we talk about this at some point? Maybe. No, I don't think so. Did we talk about like, Asian pears? Oh. Everyone right now, next time you have a chance, go to HEB and get an Asian pear. Like, you have and no it, idea. Pretty much everybody, everybody who listens here, they'll never see an Asian pear. Like, yeah. it's not a thing down here. Like, you, maybe if you go to Walmart or no, somewhere H- a little H- farther north. H- H-E-B has them. Mm-hmm. And it's like, they're not even from Asia. Like, this, like, this thing was, like, grown in California. But that's besides the point. Point is, it's like, in my mind, it's a mix between apples, pears, and then at the very end, like, a hint of orange. It's, like, crazy. Your mouth, your mouth is taking on a trip. It's, like, the closest thing you can get to drugs for $2. Damn. Damn son, that's how that's passionate a... I am about Asian pears. Like, I'm. I feel like a lot of them ride on the success of other stuff. Like, of course, I love watermelon. Like, watermelon's by far one of my favorite fruits. Yeah, but I find yeah. it very hard to eat without tahini. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's just, it's just the difference between like the sweetness and the kind of tanginess. Or not tangy. What, what do you? How would you describe it? Uh, I don't know, man. I haven't eaten one in a long time. That's not me. For, for the non-Mexicans, because, you know, JB's all dirty and wet back mm-hmm. and stuff. Tajin is like a little chile powder. Dude, uh, you said wet back and we're going to get in trouble. <laughs> of, uh, our Mexican fan base is going gonna, is gonna to be pissed. <laughs> all of them. Well, no. People people who listen over there, how, what, what, what kind of heritage are they packing? Actually, no. Recently, over here, like, they're starting to give... Packets of tahin at the lunch. They line. they do that to us too. <gasps> Dude, it Dude, spices it's, things it's, up, man. It's, it's, it's almost like, like actually... we live in the same state with the same lunch laws. With... Right? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's like, "Damn you, Michelle Obama is just like, dude." If, every time, it, maybe if you you try a little hard on the fitness gram, we wouldn't have <laughs> to freaking. It's just like, hey, what kind of what's this bread made out of? It's wheat. It's always wheat. It's one hundred percent wheat. What kind of like the pasta, the rice, the 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 everything? The everything milk. is right. Like it's everything wheat. is wheat. And it and it's just like, what kind of meat is this? Oh, this is a wheat sandwich with wheat inside. I'm like, mm. perfect. <laughs> I hate, like, the chicken. Like, at least with the meat, it kind of seems real. But, like, sometimes the chicken's just, like, straight up, you can tell this is not real chicken. Like, yeah. Like, and and the, by far, the biggest weakness we have is the Mexican food. And it's just, like, 
And I would say, I'm just like, why? <laughs> like, wh- I, I'm sure the lunch ladies know how to freaking cook, oh, but, yeah. <laughs> and then they're just like, they're like, oh, kind of mass produce a nasty enchilada that like nobody eats. Hey. That contains like, it's just like 80% cheese and a tortilla that's too hard on the outside. Quick question. So when you get your lunch, you get like a little packet with like the fork and straw, right? With a napkin. The little packet of, yeah, like the, with the utensils and all that. Yeah. Okay. Which, which is a spork, in short. A spork? It's a spork, a little tiny straw, and then a napkin, right? Yeah. They don't have those over here. What do they got? What so, the hell? Yeah, I, I, like, right? I, I, I'm, I, I, like, I'm shocked. I'm like, whoa. No, that's, that's what I'm saying. Of... I didn't realize this until a week ago, because I was retelling a story where back there, there was some girl choking, and she was, like, opening up her milk, and instead of just drinking it, she opened up her little plastic thing and pulled out <laughs> the straw, and then oh, drank Jesus. it. I was like, you could have died. But anyways, I was like, as I was telling that story, I was like, wait a minute. Like, did we actually have those plastic things? Because they're not here. Like, over here, when you're punching in your code, your lunch ID, they have napkin dispensers. And then Mm -hmm. as you're walking out, like, they have this little thing where there's a bunch of forks, spoons. and Yeah, like the little, it's like, they got, like, separate sections of it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, like, that seems so strange. Because, like, Do you guys use sports? No, they actually have spoons and and, and forks. Jesus, I and, feel like no, I feel so sports. dumb. They have all three, mm-hmm. and it's just like wow. And it's kind of dumb because sometimes I'll sit down and I forget. But I feel like if they had those plastic things, it'd be so much more convenient. Dude, no, the I hate sporks. Like I don't just like, and then no, and then I'm like, oh, you try to eat something that you kind of have to cut, so then you end up like poking it. And then the sport kind of just starts like bending and curving and it just doesn't make any sense. I'm like, what the hell is going on? It's like, like, why can't they just man up and be like, all right, we'll just give them whatever they need. It's like, don't half-ass two things. Don't suck at two things. Just <laughs> be pretty good at one. Dude. And like, how do they expect you to drink the milk with a, like, like with the, a spork, you know, a thing with holes in it. Like it's got holes <laughs> oh, on, like, yeah, the on the front. With the cereal. Yeah. Yes. But... And they just end up like having... When, when you pull up, like, the cereal, and, and it's just, like, you're just eating the straight-up cereal, and it's, like, lacking the milk because yeah, yeah. once you once the angle is, like, not 180 degrees, it's <laughs> it just, just, like, ends up, up the milk just spills out. <laughs> and then what else was there? I think that's it. But, yeah, that was very strange. It was, like, it was so mind-boggling how I hadn't noticed until now. But at least over here, I mean, I kind of like it how we can get, like, as many napkins as we need. Right. But I, but I <laughs> dude, never do those. The, ma- I... the napkins here are so flimsy. Oh, yeah. They were like... Dude, do, you guys, do you guys get straws? No, we don't get straws. Oh, that was the oh. next thing I was going to say. Oh, you're not children. Oh, okay. Just... Yeah, we, we, we know how to put <laughs> liquids in our mouth. I think we've practiced long enough. Mm-hmm. But... Dude, I, I personally drink the, the... I rarely ever drink the milk because I... Probably, I try to bring in as much water as I can to school. But, like, every time I drink the milk, I drink it sideways. Because I feel like that's the fastest way to, that it comes out. Because what it kind of glugs. What do you mean it sideways? Glugs. I, I turn it sideways. Because you know how when you open up the milk, it's kind of like... Pointed. It's Yeah, it's it, it goes kind of like uh, forward. Yeah. Well, I kind of put it so my the entire opening goes around my mouth. Or and then you- I drink it. You could start doing... It might look dumb, but you could open both sides. So mm-hmm. you drink from one, and the other side is where the air goes through. What? Well, I think it's it's the same thing, and you don't have to look like an idiot. Um, <laughs> I mean, the sideways milk. I mean, who's a real loser? Dude, I'm telling you, it doesn't glug. Like, there's no, there's no bubble is type thing. Is there a word for that? Fr- Are we just... Ah, uh, is... probably. I mean, I mean we're, glug, we're ignorant. Glug no, and I was... And then, uh, no, I was seeing a, a video about, like, the proper way to put oil. I don't know why I was watching it. <laughs> I saw it on r slash videos, and I was like, well, I got to watch all the things that go above, like, a, a thousand <laughs> upvotes. And I never upvote anything because I'm a terrible person. Um, and he, he ends up being like, oh, you got to, you kind of, where the opening is, you you pour it so it, the opening's on top rather than on the bottom in like the method of pouring, you know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. it's the openings on one end or the other. And I was like, wow, that's probably like, and it's weird because I feel like my 
Like it's one of those reaction things. Like I never used to drink milk sideways, but <laughs> but, but now, now I just like I was like, well, this is more efficient. Like there's no. How, how I did you live to... your life beforehand? I can't believe anybody actually drink through the freaking straws, like as in the narrowest straws on planet Earth. Like really? Yeah, but I don't like, think some people might understand that those straws were like super tiny, like not rest. Like I think it's like straws. borderline. You ever see those like um, coffee stirs? Yes, it's it's basically like a little more than a coffee stir, which is mm-hmm. way too small. Yeah, it's probably like double the the diameter or radius or radius. circumference. I don't know anymore. It probably, it probably all equates to the same thing. <laughs> um, In the end, it doesn't. Really yeah, matter. and mm-hmm. yeah, just, <laughs> you know, the songs. <laughs> no, no, no. Like, it's like in the end, nothing else matters. I'm like, nothing else matters. Metallica. That's not how it goes. It's like Metallica. Hey, they come here. Oh, I, you sing singing Metallica. I thought it was like the Linkin Park. In the end, it doesn't really even matter. Oh, uh, is it? Is it doesn't really, or is it doesn't know. even? I know. After that, it's like no, I don't remember. Uh, doesn't even matter. I tried so, so hard. Uh, that guy's so yelling. That, that guy's yelling, but he's not yelling. You know what I mean? It's kind of like when like you whisper not... yell. <laughs> do you ever try to get after somebody whispering? Just like, yeah, just fuck up, dude. Uh, I hate that because it's like you need to scold them, but it's just like you don't also want to get in trouble. <laughs> do you gotta curse them out, whispering? It's like, fuck up, you, you, yeah. <laughs> you gotta hiss at them. Like, yeah. See, that's why we gotta learn sign language. But the, the the whole world should just learn sign language. And then we can't communicate because that's not how sign language works. It's not universal. Oh, Everybody's true. got a language. It's like American sign language. It, it'd be awesome if if there was sign language was a universal language. Like See, there was no like A or B. You know See, I don't understand that's... why sign sign language isn't just one singular universal language because <laughs> it's not like there's different characters for sign language. Like it's all your hands. It's Jesus, all... how does Chinese work in sign language? It's know. probably something. How many characters does it have? Isn't there like keyboards that are like five miles long? Because <laughs> cause they're like a bajillion characters. I think Chinese has like, well, it's, it's Mandarin. Enough of the racism, JV. El, el Chino Mandarin. <laughs> Mandarin. I think it has like 500 characters. But like the way it works is like on a computer, whenever you put two different characters, you type them out. Sometimes they'll like join together, I think, to s- form certain symbols. But I could also be putting this out my ass. So, who knows? Dude, you're pulling Mandarin out of your ass. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I always have a trouble distinguishing a Mandarin, a Tangerine, and a... Well, I, I know what a Tangelo is, because I remember in Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy. <laughs> Wait, they, aren- they said the word tren- Tangelo, and it's one of them that has like a nipple on it, kind of. <laughs> you ever Wait. have those orange with nipples on them, and you're just like, ugh. It's yeah. like a waste. Yeah, it's like on the edge. It's like all like the white, outery stuff. You know what I mean? No, it's not. It's some. It's actually some of the meat, but it's just like it's too intermingled with like the crappy stuff. Mm-hmm. Wait, so I thought tangerine, tangerines and mandarins were the same thing. I think tangerines. No, cuties are cuties. Mandarins. C- cuties are like the flat ones. Okay, so which ones? Look. Which ones are halos? Hey man, you better stop with the with, with all this other stuff. Hold up, let me make sure. With all these brand named oranges. Cause I think I think it's the same thing with cutie. It's a mandarin. Okay, wait, let me make sure. Um, once again, just to reiterate, buy Asian pears and be happy for the rest of your life, please. Dude, if they can if they can make a a giant Mandarin or whatever I like, that'd be so good. Cause like oranges are a whole other level. Like I feel like mandarins or tangerines or whatever the hell I eat, like eating are much like sweeter and have like a really great flavor that that and that regular oranges can't really stack up to. Yeah, I don't know the difference. <laughs> they all look the same. Oh, accidentally looked up Mandarin from Iron Man. Sorry, 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 sorry. Um, he's in like Iron Man three. He's like this, this like uh, he's supposed to be like this terrorist, but then he ends up just being an actor. What? 
I'm very behind on my superheroes. Have you tried watching Luke Cage? No. Did you know? Alex, you... Alex, you want to go out for coffee? Right now. It's a it's a Luke Cage. Ah, yeah. oh, dude, I'm not cool. I'm not hip. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what's going on anymore. You were gonna say something, I believe. <sighs> oh, just that one. Nope, it's gone. We're talking about fruits, I guess, or ice cream, or some other stuff, video games. Who knows? Video- I love this podcast. I love how we just like we really do just talk about other, like yeah. You which, were, yeah. I, w- I wish we could have named it something else, like is relating to, to like how we just always just talk about some other different nonsense. It's but I think two these two maxes. You kind of tried towards the beginning to keep it. You kept bringing it back to video games, but. You it's can't, we you just can't. can't. Cage we did. You can't cage me. We're unstoppable. I know, but like I also I add to it. I'm just like sometimes I'm just like what we're we talking about. And it don't matter. <laughs> I feel like that's what makes this podcast interesting. How like for the topic for today, we're gonna talk about something, and then we're gonna talk about literally everything else. <laughs> we should just title it something random, and then people will be like, okay, it's probably eventually gonna end up. Dude, no, we already have a formula. Two relevant things, and then something funny. I already know that the end of this one's gonna be sporks. Like no doubt, we talked about it for like two minutes, but like that's the funniest aspect of this entire conversation, at least that I've noticed so far. <laughs> so you're saying we're not that funny? Sporks is like our peak of, of comedy gold. Dude, no, and Frank. And Frank, dude. And Pelicans. A the the first one you accidentally put a, and eh, whatever it doesn't matter what the inner workings. We gotta make sure like we gotta act like we're not stressed out about this. You know this. This thing's pretty fun and easy. You know we're not having no tr- troubles at all. We're not like our content being destroyed. <laughs> we got what? No, nothing. Um, I guess it's time to. How much time do we got? We we're at fifty six minutes, so we got a little bit longer. I mean, I was thinking about doing a little more for for the day we lost, but I don't know. It's kind of it's kind of up in the air. We'll just see. I th- I think we should address. So, I'm gonna talk about this toaster I have right here mm-hmm. on my desk. Yeah, you keep toasters all around. Same. I I want to. I just have an extra toaster. No, it's still in the box. I got mm-hmm. it's. <laughs> I I went to a concert a while back, and I had like VIP tickets. Mm-hmm. And since the show was like all ages, it was supposed to. Wait, be, like, wait. Was it a good toaster? I'll, I'll get to it. I'll get to it. So, uh, it, it was called a, a post-show toast, but since it was all ages, like, you couldn't do alcohol. Well, they did have some, but he kind of joked around how he was going to have a toaster, and everyone was going to, like, eat toast. And this the show I went to was, like, the fourth of his tour, and he's like, yeah, the toaster broke. So, we just have it in the tour bus, but he's like, if you guys want, I can, like, raffle it off. And it, I ended up winning, and the toaster, like, supposed it's supposed to toast his face on the bread. But they're like, yeah, it probably works like two out of every six times. Have you tried? And then you're just like, well, I'm not going to waste no damn bread. Yeah, so I just, it's just here in the box still. Like, I haven't Mm -hmm. even opened, I haven't even looked at it on the inside. Like, he could have left like a note or like money. It's like, no, it's going to, I'm going to let it collect (laughs) dust. But why though? Why don't you just like open it and embrace it? Unless you're just like, it's a collector's item. No, it's not. It's like, it's broken. But it's just like a sentimental thing. Like, he's one of my, he's a pretty good artist. Ah, oh, dude, he didn't sign it. Ah, that would have been tits, dude. Uh, he, we, we, after like the VIP thing, he, he didn't give it to me right away. So what he does is he kind of met a bunch of people that were outside just waiting after the show, like that didn't pay for VIP tickets. And so he was like busy with them, and I was basically just like waiting around the tour bus, and I had to like ask one of his like roadies or whatever. It's like, hey, I, I'm the guy who won the toaster. It's like, oh, you're that guy. And they kind of like rummaged around the bus for him, and then I got it. But uh, he probably should have signed it. That would have been cool. Yeah, that would have been pretty neat. His, sig- um, his signature was very like, it was pretty much print. It wasn't even a signature, but. <laughs> Me as a, as a celebrity. <laughs> oh, yeah, you got it. And so just writing straight up name. I just end up writing my name fast sometimes when it comes to, <laughs> when it just, it comes to cursive. Just doesn't pick up the pencil or pen. That's true. And it just I, looks like, like, it's like so confusing and ugly looking. I've taken my signature inspiration from Obama. So when, like, the first year Obama became president, it was probably, like, fourth or third grade or something. 
and I got mm-hmm. like supposedly this president's award for not dying, you know, because got to reward our kids. Mm-hmm. And it had Obama's signature, and it was like a giant O, and then the rest of his first name was literally Squiggles. Like you could not <laughs> tell anything else. So that's what I do now. I just put a giant A and then Squiggles, and then same with well, my last name. I, I would rather do. I can your signature be anything? So I could just yeah. put JB on things. No, your signature can be peanut butter if you wanted to, as long as it's consistent. Peanut butter. Peanut butter. <laughs> you got to be original by by using a uh, what's the word? Spoonerisms. Uh, spoonerism. Thank you. I love spoonerisms. You father mucker. You bun of a sitch. <laughs> you cease of pit. That was a, that was a kind of hard one to wrap your head around. Piece of. Oh yeah, cease of pit. No. Piece it, of pit. Oh, cease yeah. of fit. I get if you if you a ph if you count that fit. Well, you'd have to say like per hit no, fit. Per hit. Fit. For hit. Well, you wouldn't say for hit. It's just fit. Yeah. Cease of fit. Cease of fit. <laughs> yeah. Uh. I gotta rethink really about it. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Or, yeah. Do, yeah. Do, it kind of reminds me of, like the alternate way to spell fish. Is like the pH? Yeah, P H O T. So like the pH from phone makes the F sound. Mm-hmm. And like the O from like women, you didn't say women mm-hmm. or woman. Women, women. Women. Wait. Yeah, I think the O from woman or women. Yeah, women. You don't say woman. Basically it makes the I sound. And then like the T <laughs> from nation. It makes like the sh sound, so you get like p h o t fish. Uh, totally unrelated, but I I I love English. Or what was that one phrase we had? Which one? Freshman year. Which one? Oh, it's like eight buffaloes. Which one? oh shoot, I'm trying to think. It's basically like you can say the word buffalo seven. Oh yeah, buffalo, 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 buffalo. No, it was like seven or eight times. And like it's still no, it's buffalo, 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 buffalo. I don't know. It's because buffalo, well, the the animals, and then buffalo. What does it mean? Like bring them together? No, buffalo. It's the animals, the place, and then it's a verb for bullying, like when you bully. Oh someone. yeah. And then there's like some random commas in there that you add to make it make sense, mm-hmm. and then it makes like it's technically a correct sentence, and it's like that's so dumb. <laughs> But still, so uh, cool. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure the other languages are just ab- as absurd as the English. I'm sure, like, people do think like ours like the weirdest because it's got all a, a lot of those little like, oh, you got to make sure to do this. It's just like, but what? Well, why though? And it's like, I don't know. Like, sometimes, sometimes the English language doesn't really need an explanation <laughs> for what it does. You know what? It just acts. A strange language, French. So, like, my Spanish teacher also has like a French degree and she was so- showing us like some french pronunciations of words and i'm like that doesn't make any sense like one was like cure or no it was just like you and it was like h-u-e-r-e-u-e and it's like what like that doesn't make any sense and like they were su- making se- saying sentences and it was basically like, and it's like it just de- oh, 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 yes. <laughs> i feel like they should have their own letters like english letters that don't make sense with their language Mm-hmm. But then again, I'm also ignorant and uncultured swine. So what do I know? Hey, at least you got at least you got that. Like, I guess one and a half. I don't know how much Spanish do you know. I think I know like probably a quarter. If I, if I was, because I think I know the English language well enough. My comma, my punctuation is always really bad. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't know enough about them Oxford commas or whatever. Bro, who gives a fuck about them? <laughs> hey man, come on. This is a, this is a child. This is a child's show. This this, this show is rated PG. Dude, What's no. It? This 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 show we rated PG in like the eighties. If we <laughs> like, all we could say is just like fuck for like fifty times, and it'd be rated like PG thirteen, maybe. Like I swear, the standards have changed. We'll talk about that on the next episode. Uh, oh, peace, y'all. Wait, what? Wait, you can't lock me down like that. What if we change our minds? Dude, we'll never change our minds. We're pretty. Soft. We're, we're we're so dead set on things. Okay. I mean, no. <laughs> no, yeah, like, we end up just like, oh, this, this is a really awesome idea. Like, yeah, it is. All right, now, a baguette. You eating a baguette? <laughs> you, you, little, you little baguette? 
there's just too many interesting things in this world to talk about. That's what that's what makes it so fun. There's just you you I I'm pretty sure I've, I said it before, but people are like, dude, how can you talk for an hour straight? It's like it's not that hard. At least when I got my bestie, oh, my dude, little he came. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> another microphone comes on. It's like, hey, everybody, what's going on? <laughs> Uh, that joke was kind of dumb. It reminds me of that one joke everyone uses. It's like, you guys got any trash? It's like, yeah, hold on. It's like, hey, dude, get in the trash. It's like, ah, ha, ha, ha. It's like, Jesus. you've heard that every, every time. Yeah, and, and it's just so terrible. Dude, see, see, your, see your portraits are, is tomorrow, God. and I wonder if, I, if I'll be able to get a quote. What do you want your quote to be? I want to be a good rapper like Eminem. Nothing else matters. Oh, oh, <laughs> goddamn! <laughs> oh, that's, I don't know if we get a senior quote actually, dude. I, I, I feel like I'm so, I'm so quotable. Nah, I just, I just put like something stupid and cheesy. Just listen and be back pretty to, memorable. to our old podcast and then just find something. <laughs> and then we be like, dude, that sounds so terrible, like out of context. She's like, yeah, that's why I'm gonna, that's why I'm just gonna put it out of context as my senior quote. No, over here we had to like. For our senior porches, we had to go to like a whole different place, and we had to pay for them, and we had to make reservations, and mm-hmm. this whole big hassle. And like that one store, pretty much services like all the five high schools here. Like they've pretty much got a monopoly on the the <laughs> photography industry over here. Yeah, and it's like it's kind of it's it's weird, really. Like, you just all right, all right, all right. Things are about to get very dicey. What I'm about to say. Um. Why are the f- – like, I feel like a lot of the f- uh, photographers I've met are guys who are, um, you know, very out there. Say it. Say it, JB. Very flamboyant. Um, <laughs> I feel it's like – It's actually pretty, pretty good. It's pretty interesting. <laughs> yeah, that, that's just like a common thing. But I guess a lot of nurse, nurses – nurses? Yeah, nurses. Are female. Are, are female. It's just except this this one's a little a little more uh, on the different side. I mean, same with haircuts though. The only like most flamboyant males work at salons, but then you get like the tough guys who are like at barbers, barbers who are just like pulls out like a razor and it's just like, "Hey man, what do you want?" I'm just like, "Please get that away from me. Don't touch me." <laughs> okay. Um, I say we wrap it up here, dude. I, I we I had this the perfect wrap up that was so abrupt and so crazy that it was just too good. Come on, we can't no, just end it now. You can't. We gotta stop having these awkward endings. Like they just end, and it's like, uh, okay, bye. Is was that the ending right there? <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna stop right now. <laughs> wait, wait. So is this still recording? No, we're still we're still going. All right. Um, sh- shouts out to all the listeners. I uh, love you. You guys are very faithful listeners. I hope you spread the word if you can. To your people, or at least people who will be interested in listening to a podcast, and people who like podcasts, um, it's it's damn near impossible to freaking tell people to watch the podcast. Yeah, like honestly, like it's really awesome that people listen. Like if you're yeah. hearing this, I'm like really grateful. Like it's it's so it's so cool to know that people are interested in what we're saying. And like, I wonder, I wonder what, like, I hope it's like. Cause yeah, we were talking. I don't know if we talked about this in the podcast when we were recording, but like it's all those. It's in- interesting how people want to hear either different ideas, or maybe for like humor factor, mm-hmm. or maybe it's because oh those I like I relate to these people, or they're very likable, so I want to listen to them and support them something like that. See, we gotta get famous because that's why famous people are good at podcasts because it kind of it gives you a personal, um, like kind of view into their lives because it's like such a just open experience. Yeah, because I feel like if if I open up to the podcast now, like it's kind of the people I know mm-hmm. and already talked to. We gotta wait till we get famous. Yeah, <laughs> if we, when and if. <laughs> no, but seriously, thank you guys. Um, we'll see you next week. Thanks mm-hmm. for sticking around. Kind of took this one a little bit longer for the for the lateness, a little bit of extra juice for you to keep you going. Yeah. But yeah, that's it for this week, guys. Thank you. And Have a good one. See you then.